goodness. Yes, you are good Ooh. all the time, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Everything we right. eat, everything, every time we breathe, every heartbeat, it's your goodness. It's your goodness. And the beautiful sunshine and the wonderful rain. Lord God, everything that we have that we didn't have to run here or walk here or hitch up a horse and carriage. Lord, we, we arrived here easily. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness to us. But more than that, thank you for the spiritual blessings that you've given to us. Such goodness. So many good and perfect gifts. <laughs> gifts that we cannot even imagine, Lord. Blessings that we cannot contain. Lord, thank you for your goodness. Lord, we thank you for your gentleness. Lord, in your faithfulness. Uh, Lord Jesus, can we just thank you for his faithfulness? Lord, you never give up on us. Thank you, Lord, for never, never stopping in your desire to love us, in your desire to reach us, in your desire to care for us. You are so faithful. You are so consistent. Lord, you're the friend that sticks closer than a brother. You are that faithful friend, Lord Jesus. And Lord God, we can trust you to be there. Even though we falter, even though we fail, even though we fall short, you are faithful. You are faithful. Lord, you're so gentle. Oh, could we just appreciate his gentleness just for a moment? Thank you, Lord, for your gentleness. So tender. Lord, it's true. Sometimes even when you speak strongly to us, when you think of it as harsh, really what it is is you trying to remove something from our lives, Lord, that's destroying us. That, Lord, we've allowed to stay in our lives for too long, and now it requires surgery. But God, that's not your desire today. It's not your desire. You want to be gentle. You want to heal. Lord God, even after the harshness comes kindness and compassion comes your mercy to heal and to strengthen because you are gentle, easily entreated, Lord Jesus. And finally, we thank you, Lord, that you have self-control. Lord, so often we do not deserve what we get, Lord. You, if we got what we deserve, we would be, we would be gone. Lord, we, if we got what we deserve, Lord Jesus, Lord, I'm so thankful that you, Lord Jesus, have control over yourself. That you do not, Lord Jesus, just Give in to every whim that you have and every, every even when we disobey your laws and your precepts and your principles, God, you stay kind to us and compassionate and loving. What self-control you have. What power, Lord Jesus, you have to keep yourself from destroying us because of your love and mercy. Thank you that mercy overrides truth. Thank you, Jesus, for grace that overrides my sin. Lord, all of that is your your self-control evident in our lives. Amen. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Let's just be in covenant with him right now. Heavenly Father, we want to give you this day. We want to serve you to the best of our abilities. God, we want to reflect the fruit of your spirit in our lives to those around us. We want love and peace and joy to flow in our lives. Patience and kindness and goodness. Lord, let faithfulness and gentleness and self-control be evident in our lives, especially over the next several minutes as we interact with one another before service starts. Lord, be with us. And throughout this day, we pray. In Jesus' name, and the church said, Amen. Well, it's 1028. I guess the clock's been fixed. Get a little more time before service starts. Amen. Spend a couple minutes reaching out, connecting with someone. Amen. Let them know you're glad they're here. I'm glad that the fruit of the Spirit is with us. Amen.
Amen. Man, two minutes goes by quick when you're loving on people. Let's stand together this morning. It's good to be here. Hello, hello. Good morning, good morning. Amen. I was glad when they said it to me, let us go to the house of the Lord, even if it is at 10 o'clock in the morning, right? Amen. God bless you. Amen. Would you like to lift your hands toward heaven and offer yourself as a living sacrifice? Lord, we give ourselves to you in sweet surrender. <laughs> there is no God like you. We've come, Lord, to rejoice. No matter what's going on in our lives, you're still worthy. No matter what's going on in our hearts, you're still worthy. No matter what's going on in our family, you're still worthy. You're still glorious. You're still excellent. And so, God, I come today to bring a sacrifice of praise. I'm going to give you my very best. Lord, I'm going to give it my very best today as an act of worship and service to you. Amen. Let's have a worship service today. Amen. Hallelujah for the Lord our God. The Almighty reigns. Hallelujah for the Lord our God. The Almighty reigns. Hallelujah for the Lord our God. The Almighty reigns. Hallelujah for the Lord our God. The Almighty reigns. All praises be to the today. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. People from every nation and sound, from generation to generation, we worship. Generation to generation, we worship you.
this morning we've sung it a couple of times but it's really it's prophesying what's gonna happen how many believe that God is gonna move in these last days oh hallelujah it's gonna be something we've never seen before amen and as I have to tell you this is in my heart today when we first moved up here we were talking to a lady and we were telling her we were my husband was a pastor and all that and she looked at us and she was a sweet lady but you can be sweet and not really have the mind of Christ right and she said you know churches are a dying breed that's what she said to us and something really smote my heart because wow to believe that is where's the hope of where's the hope if you don't have uh, you know the, the hope of God moving in the earth through his local church. Where's the hope of that? But you know what? She was wrong. So I don't know. Some churches may be dying, but the church is not dying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I don't know if any of, of you guys heard this report, but we had a team that went to Brazil last week. 12,000 people received the Holy Ghost in one service. I don't think the church is dying today. Hallelujah. Amen. And a lady with a tumor on her neck that was visible, large, large tumor on her neck. They prayed for her. They saw it dissolve just right before their very eyes. A crippled man just took off running, really, around the conference. The church is not dying today. Hallelujah. You read the Bible is the word of God, and God tells us what's going to happen in these last days. He is going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want us to sing this song declaring the word of the Lord today. We are the church of the living God, and we are not dying this morning. We are alive and vibrant in Christ. Hallelujah. Is anyone with the Lord this morning? We are the, on the Lord's side today. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. These are the days of Elijah, declaring the word of the Lord. And those are the days of your servant Moses, righteousness being restored. Oh, yes, it is. Hallelujah. These are the days of great trial, a famine and darkness and sword. So we are the voice in the desert crying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun at the trumpet call, lift your voice. The year of Jubilee, out of Zion till salvation comes. And these are the days of Ezekiel, the dry bones becoming as flesh. And these are the days of your servant David, 
building a temple of praise. And these are the days of the harvest. The fields are as wide and the world. And we are the laborers in your vineyard, declaring the word of the Lord. Behold, he comes riding on the clouds, shining like the sun at the trumpet call. It's your voice. It's a year of jubilee. Out of Zion till salvation comes. Oh, declare it. These are the days of Ezekiel. The dry bones becoming a spread. These are the days of your servant David. Oh, yes, we are. Hallelujah. And these are the days of the harvest. The fields are as wide in the world. And we are the laborers in your vineyard. Declare. Trumpet call, lift your voice. Is a year of jubilee out of Zion till salvation comes. Oh, there's no God like Jehovah. 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 Oh, just close your eyes and sing it. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 Hallelujah! Lift your voice! Hallelujah! There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no more time. Hallelujah! There's no God like Jehovah. 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 Behold, He comes riding on the cloud, shining like the sun as a trumpet calls. Lift your voice. It's a year of jubilee. time to celebrate our freedom hallelujah he has come into our hearts and into our lives giving us unmerited pleasure hallelujah the freedom that he gives us the pleasure of his mercy and grace hallelujah 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 it's a time of worship Amen. a time of praise hallelujah mm -mm -mm. Woo. hallelujah hallelujah Thank you, Jesus. How many of you know he's coming on a cloud? Are you looking for his appearing today? Maybe you'd just like to tell him, Lord, I can't wait. I can't wait to see you. I'm looking for your return. Hallelujah. You're going to bring salvation to this world and bring us out of this world and into the hope that we have beyond this life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. And I don't do this that often, but every once in a while, I like us to praise God for what we need. How many of you know that that's a form of faith? Yes. Is yes. when you thank Him before Hallelujah. you receive it. Amen. Can we thank the Lord for the, the salvation that's going to come upon our world, that the harvest is going to be reaped? 
Can we thank the Lord for the lost in our families that are going to be transformed? Can we do that right now, Heavenly Father? We're praying today for the harvest field. We're so thankful that the fields are already white for harvest. We thank you, Lord, that we are laborers in the oh, harvest yeah, field. La, 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 we thank you, Lord, for the revival that is already here and is on its way in our lives. The restoration of faith, the restoration of hope. We thank you today by faith, Lord, for the souls that will be saved over this next 12 months. God, we thank you today for the blessings, Lord God. They're going to fall like rain upon your people. We thank you for the healings that are already here and on their way. We thank you for the restoration of understanding of doctrine and truth and righteousness. We thank you today for love and joy and peace flowing through us like a river, like with pressure and power. God, reaching our world, we thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do in the lives of the lost. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, God, for reaching the lost of our city. Thank you for using us and believing in us, Lord, choosing us for this hour. Thank you for choosing me. Would you say with me, thank you for choosing me to be used to carry this gospel, to carry this precious hope. Lord, we have what this world needs, Lord. And we know that you're going to reveal it to the world. You're going to reveal this church, Lord God, to the world. These people, everywhere they go this week, you're going to reveal us to the world. You're going to give us open doors that no one can shut. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Do you feel that way today? Do you yes, have that kind Lord. of faith? God, you're going to open doors yes, for us to yes, share this amen, gospel. Yes, you're going to, Lord, give us wisdom hallelujah. and direction yes, that's beyond our own ability. You're going to help us to minister to people that, Lord God, are outside the hot type, the ark of safety, that are outside the place of hope. And you're going to bring them home. Lord, we're going to make them part of our family. We're going to love them. Lord, we're going to share our joy. We're going to share our hope that you've given us with this world. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. I know that feels a little strange if you're not careful, but it's wonderful to thank God for what he's already promised as if it's already come to pass. That's what faith is. It's the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. What you just heard us praying is evidence that the harvest will be reaped, that our lost loved ones will come home. That's the evidence right there. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Can we one more time thank him? Thank you, Lord, for the promises of your word. Thank you, Lord, for the latter-day rain that's upon us. Thank you, Lord, for this hour of revelation and restoration. We thank you, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Before you're seated, go around, move around a little bit. You have freedom. You can move as much as you want. Take a minute or two, however long it takes. Go out of your way to love on someone. Just want to remind you of a few things while you're finishing up your connecting. Lord willing, and the rain doesn't come, we'll have a church picnic on the 16th, which is this Saturday. Amen. We're going to have our and our men, which I'll want to meet with you after service. So don't forget that we'll meet after service to kind of discuss this. And uh, Brother Conrad is helping us hit this up, but. I'm going to work alongside of them there, and hopefully all the rest of us can too, that are willing and able. And uh, whatever you can help us with, we are half, happy to have your help. Uh, those that are in leadership, of course, will be having a meeting at 1 p.m., assuming that we have the picnic. If not, everything will be moved back to the 23rd, which is will be the following Saturday. If there's rain, we'll let you know. Um, if it's raining, that's obviously not going to be a picnic because we want to have it outside, hopefully with some nice fall weather. Amen. We would love to have that. Would it be nice if we had a little light jacket weather? I'd like to see that. That would be good. Amen. With some corn, and we'll have some hot dogs, probably hamburgers. I don't know. We'll talk to Conrad about that, and then games and things like that. So we encourage you to bring family and friends and let them know if they come this weekend. Great. If not, uh, we would love to have them if there's a rain delay. Uh, and it'll be at 3 o'clock 
this coming Saturday. So come as you are. And uh, if you want to bring uh, sweets or something, that's fine. I think we're going to allow anybody that wants to bring that. If you want to bring sweets beside yourself, of course, we know that you're all sweet. But if you want to bring some sweets that we can eat, then uh, you might want to do that. And then we'll let you ladies compete if you want. And men, if you want to compete on that. The right men will be serving. We want to do this as a way of serving the community, especially as the board. And also as leaders in our homes, we want to serve. I believe that God is a servant leader, isn't he? And we want to reflect that. Let's not forget, if you want to, uh, General Conference uh, will be online. I'm not sure exactly all that they're offering, but if you get a chance, be at least in prayer about it from the 19th to the 22nd. So that's next week. Uh, so look forward to that. The 21st, um, there's a free potluck in Scott's Nursery presentation, and this is in town. So that would be an opportunity to go to the New Maryland Center if you want to learn more about uh, fall gardening tips you want to be part of connecting to our community it's a great opportunity on the 21st let's not forget i'm going to go back to the 20th let's not forget that march downtown uh it's on the bolton board and you can take a flyer with you if you want there's like two or three out there there's no point in wasting them if you want to take one and uh, share it with your neighbors we encourage you to be downtown as we stand up for our kids and what's being taught in our schools uh, so let's be downtown and there's more uh, details in the, on the flyer there so be aware of that and uh of course, uh, National Day for Truth and Reconciliation is on the 30th. And then, of course, October 9th is Thanksgiving holiday. We've got several things coming up that we'll be talking to you about uh, as we prepare for, believe it or not, the fall and winter. Here we go. And so uh, i do not not too excited about that. But let's enjoy the summer weather we had this week. Amen. I looked at next week or this coming week, and it's in the 70s, so low 70s. So that's going to be comfortable weather, but let's enjoy it. Amen. We don't want to receive that. <laughs> Some of you are really resisting it, aren't you? Amen. I love the tea. I love the sweater weather, though. I'll just be honest. I love fall. It's, it's, hey, you guys aren't the ones that shovel all this stuff, most of you anyway. So, <laughs> so uh, I look forward to what God is going to do. But I do believe, just to be clear, that God wants to give us a fall harvest. And I mean that in the spiritual sense. How many of you have enough faith to believe that God wants us to reach our friends and neighbors with the gospel of Jesus Christ? Anybody got anybody they know that needs to be healed or strengthened or blessed, restored? Family members that need to be renewed? Let's pray. Let's continue in prayer. I'm going to really encourage you. Continue to especially pursue God in prayer. I'll talk more about that in the near future. I'm hopefully going to be able to get Brother McNair to come. But even if he doesn't, we're going to make sure that we spend some extra focus on prayer this fall because I believe the end time is upon us. I really do. And uh, we're seeing that in so many ways. I'd love to share with you what I heard this week from several ministers. They gave me prophetic words, and I'm hoping to share those with you in the near future. In fact, I'm hoping one of them to come and, and share what he said to me. Um, maybe in the near future, Brother Calhoun gave me a very clear word, and so did Brother Curtis Scott. So um, beautiful. They told me, both of them, they told me that we will be seeing a revival this year. They were seeing a harvest. But we have to do our part, don't we? We have the word of the Lord, but we must live it out. And I don't want you to look for those opportunities. I mean, we receive the word of the Lord today that God wants to give us a harvest. Amen. I know, I know I'm pushing you a little bit. I know I'm making you do it. But let's agree. In fact, let's pray right now. Heavenly Father, Lord, open our eyes to see the harvest. We have been strengthened over the last eight years, but now it's time to go into all the world and to preach the gospel, teaching them to observe, making disciples, Lord. This is our call, especially as the church in motion. We want to move forward one strong step at a time, Lord, carrying this precious gospel, carrying, denying ourselves and carrying this cross to our world so we can follow you into the hearts and minds of people, relieving them, Lord, releasing them from the weights and cares of this life and setting them free from the bondage has held them captive. We pray this in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, say it with me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So be it. God bless you. We're going to sing one more song. And uh, before we get into the word of the Lord here today. Well, if you know it, sing it with me. How can I say thanks for the things you have done for me things so undeserved yet 
you gave to prove your love for me. The voices of a million angels could not express my gratitude. for what he's already done. Surely we can give him high praises for all of his Hallelujah. presence, for our you, salvation, Lord, Lord. for our healing, for, for our blessings. Me, Hallelujah. 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 wanting to do right now. Do it in me, Lord. Do it through me. We sang it recently. But could we sing it one more time?
sacrifice reveal to me your calling cleanse me from my prideful ways use me now I pray breathe Come on, this is a safe space. This is the place in the shadow of the Almighty. This is the fortress of God, the stronghold of the living God. Come on, take your liberty. Come on, take your freedom. Grab it with bold hands and don't let go. Come on, he's begun a good work. Come on, he's begun the work, but he's continuing the work right now in the Holy Spirit. He's begun that work of healing, that work of restoration, that work of revelation, that work of understanding. Work in me, move in me, do your work in me. Transform us, God. Restore us. in the name of Jesus We're right on the cusp of it, folks. We're right on the edge of what is unbelievably powerful. Mm, some of you have already tipped your toe and took a sip from the cup of that powerful flow. Well, let me give you a little instruction so we can go further in what we're feeling right now. Amen. I believe the word I have for you. I. I've had messages struggling in me all week. Jacob and Esau, maybe, I don't know. Amen. But uh, based on your response, we're going to go with message number two. Amen. We could have done I can do all things through Christ. And we will. We'll get there. But instead, we're going to talk about the big idea today is what goes in comes out. Turn to your neighbor and say, what goes in comes out. That's right. Amen. Romans chapter 6, verse 16, if you'd stand with me for the reading of the word one last time. If you're able, we understand if you're not able, stand on the inside. Amen. Romans chapter 6, verse 16. Do you not know? Do you? What do you know? Do you know that to whom you present yourself slaves to obey, you are that one slaves whom you obey, 
whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. Hallelujah. Would you ask God to do a work in you? I'm going to ask him to do a work in me today. Heavenly Father, as the word flows through my life, may it correct, protect, and direct. Lord Jesus, I need your strength and your power. And God, what we're going to lay aside today is any weight or sin, anything that hinders. Because God, we are going to choose our master today. We're going to choose whom we will serve. And God, when we leave this place, we're going to leave with a spring in our step, with joy in our heart with laughter on our lips, and we're going to have a a gleam in our eye if we allow you to do the work you want to do today. That is your desire, is that joy unspeakable would fill our lives before we leave this place today. In Jesus' name, and the church said, Amen. amen. Clap your hands, all you people, and shout with the voice of triumph. God has given us this land and this city. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. Uh, When I was in college, yay, many eons ago, no, maybe not eons, decades ago, amen, Uh, well, maybe, actually, it's only been a decade ago since I last went to college, I started about three decades ago, Uh, that's a whole story in itself, right, but anyway, I was going to college, I originally went to college, Uh, many of you know, already know this, for a computer science degree, Um, it was cutting edge stuff back in the day, and I loved everything about it, and uh, we had an Apple IIe, and it had an IBM 386 and a 486, and oh man, floppy disks. Some of you don't even know what those are, some of you younger ones. And, uh, and so we had all kinds of things back in the day. And so, but when I went to college, I learned a term that I've mentioned to you before. Anybody want to take a guess at what it is? Garbage in, garbage out. Garbage in, garbage out. You know, this, this principle is not really new to the world. Solomon kind of talked about it, about the importance of having good friends because what they put in your life has a tendency to come out. Uh, You can read all kinds of things in Proverbs that have similarities to that about sowing and reaping because what you put in comes out. And then, of course, the Apostle Paul in the New Testament talked about basically about sin. In fact, we just read one of his his writings to the church in Rome in chapter 6, verse 16. And so we see this concept, and the Wikipedia puts it this way, in computer science, garbage in, gar- garbage out, or gigo, which is the title of my message, gigo, turn your name and say gigo, not giggle, gigo, gigo, and, or gigo, maybe, I don't know, I have no idea, amen, is a concept that, is, that flawed or nonsense garbage input, what you put in, produces nonsense output. Or some people use this rubbish in, rubbish out, probably the British, I would imagine. Rubbish in, rubbish out as an alternate wording. And so this principle applies to all logical argumentation. If you have garbage in, if you have wrong precepts or fundamental concepts that you're building your life on, foundation principles, core values, uh, then you have trouble. Um, And there's this little saying here that I I just, it caught my attention. And so I hadn't seen something write this down before. But you might want to write this down if you're taking notes. Soundness implies validity. I know those are fancy words. But validity does not imply soundness. We have a concept today in our world. Validity means something that, you know, validates. That's true. And it may be true for you, but that does not make it sound. We're living in a culture that says truth is if I believe it or feel it. I'm sorry. Reality is not changed by your thoughts or your desires or what you would like. And so there's some concepts in our culture that are really becoming problematic. And I think we're aware of some of the issues in our culture that we think that we can change reality. You know what we're saying? We're saying we can be our own God. We're saying if I think it, it should be so. The reality is only God can say it and it be so. Amen. It doesn't matter what I say. What matters is, is it true? And so we have to be very careful that just because we want it to be true, just because it's valid because we think it's so, and we want to validate one another. And I've heard people say that. I want you to validate me. Okay, I can validate you. But that does not make you right. What makes you right is if you're in alignment with God's plans and God's principles, it, well, you're in alignment with actual truth. And so validity does not Im- imply soundness. It may not be something you can build a life on. And this is what our culture is struggling with. We're building our lives on things that are not sound. They may be valid. 
You have a right to your opinion. You have a right to your idea. God gives you that right to free, free choice. But what you choose is important. It's critical, in fact. And so we're living in a culture that sometimes forgets that just because I don't, I, I don't recognize it as garbage doesn't mean it isn't. We're living in a culture where garbage in, garbage out. It's an acrostic or an acronym um, for, that can stand not only for garbage in, garbage out, but can stand in for some other things. And so today I'm going to give you probably six or seven things that GI, GO can stand for. Number one, garbage in, garbage out. Or as I, I, the thing that's been on my mind for several weeks, and please don't take it the wrong way, okay? I know you could take it the wrong way. But the thing that's been in my mind, my heart for like three or four weeks now is garbage in, garbage dump. Right? If you pour enough garbage in there, you're no longer anything but a garbage dump. And that's why we need to be very careful what we listen to, who our friends are. We need to be very careful what we watch on the Internet. It's easy to scroll your way through three or four hours, those of us that are connected to the Internet. It's easy to be on the phone talking to someone who's talking trash. We have to be very careful what we allow into our lives, we, even from the newspaper, even from, from supposedly good sources. We have to be very careful. Let me tell you, one of the few sources I trust anymore is this good book right here. Honestly, I'm being honest with you, and I'm not talking about the other things I can get to through this iPad, okay? I'm talking about specifically the Word of God, okay? I'm a, I recognize that. We need to be careful that not all sources are the same. Not everything is true. And we need to understand that. And so we've got to develop our ability to discern right from wrong by knowing right and by knowing truth. You can't, this world is getting so crazy. There's so much knowledge in the world. We talked about this last week. We're ever learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. So we're filled. The, world, the Bible says in the last days, it will be increased with knowledge. Knowledge is doubling. Uh, it used to be every six months, so I'm sure it's accelerated from that. Every six months, knowledge is doubling. There's no way you can know everything. So what do you need to know? You need to know what truth is. You need to know what is something you can count on and be sure of. So let me just share some other thoughts with you. And I'm not going to, I'll dig into this maybe a little later if we have time. But grace in, grace out. Now there's a good giggle. Right? Right? Grace in, grace out. How many of you received the grace of God? Do you go, God wants you to show grace to your world? Isn't that beautiful? How about this? Glory in, glory out. Ooh, we'll talk about that in a minute when we talk about Moses. Wow, the glory comes in, and then the glory comes out. Amen. This is some, some beautiful things. Let me, look, let, me, let me talk to you a little bit about what Jesus had to say about this topic. In Mark chapter 7, verse 18 through 20, there's some people that, that didn't understand this. They thought it was all about the outward appearance. They thought it was all about the natural and so they thought the natural things could give them spiritual blessings. And there's some truth to that, but you've got to be really careful with that because that's the law. And the Pharisees and Sadducees saw the disciples eating grain on the Sabbath as they went through a field. And Jesus was like, you think that's what defiles a person? Or that they didn't wash their hands? You think that physical dirt is what defiles a person? We have to be very careful, especially in Pentecostal circles, where we have, a, we have to be very careful because I do believe in our church standards. I do believe in men dressing like men and women dressing like women. I do believe in hemlines and hairlines. I do believe in all that. You've never heard me preach about it hardly. I don't think ever. But the reason, the, because that's not the focus. God will guide you in those things if you're doing the right thing. Amen. Right? I don't have to preach those things. I might teach them on an individual basis, but I don't have to preach them that much because that's more about if your heart's after God, then you're holy inside, and before long, holy comes outside. If you put that holy in, what, right? Then guess what? You have holy comes out, and that's very, very simple concept. So these Pharisees and Sadducees were focusing on the outward appearance, but Jesus is very clear here. It's not what's on the outside that makes you a sinner. It's not what you eat. Physically. But he goes on to say, listen to this in verse 18. So he said to them, Are you thus without understanding also? At this point, he's already, he's already come back against the, the Pharisees and Sadducees. And now his disciples are saying, What would that mean? And he's like, What? You, you're not, you didn't get it? How can you not understand this? And I think that Jesus is asking us this question today. And please don't be offended. If you are, be offended at God. Because the question is today, Do you understand? That it's not the outward 
that causes you to be a sinner. It's what goes on in your heart that makes you a sinner. And he goes on to say this. Are you thus without understanding also? Do you not perceive that whatever enters a man from the outside cannot defile him? Now he's talking about actual physical things. You know that? Look at this next scripture. Because it does not enter his heart but his stomach. Okay? So he's making a comparison here between the natural and the spiritual. And is eliminated. It, re- it goes into your body and it goes out of your body. Thus purifying all foods. And that's one reason why we don't. That's why we love bacon, because otherwise we'd still be under the law, folks. We would still have some issues with some of the with some of the dietary laws. So he makes it very clear here that under the New Testament law, it's there's no such thing as un, unworthy foods or unrighteous foods or unholy foods. Uh, that it's it's not about the food that we eat, or because the Sabbath is made for us, or the time of rest is made for us. The food is made for us to be strengthened by. But look at this in Mark twenty. Uh, 21 and verse 22. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lewdness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile a man. And so Jesus is asking this today, and I'm not going to go into all that list. You can Study that this week if you want to and search your heart to make sure that you're not being defiled. There's a big difference between outward holiness and inward holiness. And that's the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament. God wants us to be pure from the inside out. Now the reality is without God's help, that's impossible. Can you say amen? Amen. How many of you figured that out already? You cannot be righteous by your own ability. You cannot keep your mind clear. You cannot keep your heart from covetousness or theft or from from the desires of this world, from envy, from these types of things, wickedness, deceitfulness, um, lewdness. There's all kinds of things, looking at things wrong, looking hard at people, uh, being foolish. We all have times in our lives when we fall short. So how do we transform these things? It's through the power of getting in what we need because we don't have it in ourselves to be righteous. We don't have it in ourselves to be holy. We don't have it in ourselves to be glorious. We don't have it in ourselves to be what God wants us to be. Can anybody say amen to that? Amen. Amen. So when we recognize that, that brings humility. But humility, when it's brought to God, allows God to transform us. Can you get it? Anybody agree with that? Does God transform your life because you came to him in repentance and found his mercy and found his grace? And so grace came into your life and it cleansed you and washed you free and covered you and gave you time and space to grow, time and space to become what God wanted you to be. Aren't you glad for the blood of Jesus that washes away all of our unrighteousness? It comes from outside in and flows through us. Amen. Carrying away our iniquity. Amen. Carrying away our sin. God wants to empower us. This is a G3 message. In other words, this is tied into our our theme for this year. God wants to empower us. He wants to empower me. He wants to empower you this year to get, to give, and to go to the third power. God wants to empower you, not just to the basics to get something, but to not only, but also to give and to go beyond even giving, to going and finding people that need what we have. Can anybody agree with that? Can anybody agree with what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church in motion this year. He's saying to me, he's saying to you, it's time to get what you need. It's time to give what you have and it's time to go find someone that you can bless. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, Galatians chapter 3, 27 says this, for as many as you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Say with me, put on Christ. Turn to the name and say, put on Christ. Put on Christ. It's time to get in to Christ. It's time to put on Jesus. We've been baptized into Christ. Amen. Have you ever heard, amen, someone say, what are you getting into now? What are you getting into now? If you've been a parent or you've been a child, you know exactly what we're doing. What are you getting into now? What are you, what are you doing now? What kind of a mess are you get? I'm hoping that there's some people, it's not a negative thing. When someone says, what are you getting into now? You say, well, I'm getting into prayer. <laughs> 
I'm getting into the Holy Spirit. I'm getting into the Word. I'm getting into the promises. I'm getting into reaching the lost. I'm getting into something good. I'm getting into the Spirit so that God can flow out of me to make a difference in my world. Anybody want to get into Jesus more than ever before? You want to get in the Holy Spirit, be moved and led by the Holy Spirit. Anybody want to be get into the gifts of the Spirit? You want to be used in signs and wonders and miracles? Is there anybody that wants to give out from that Holy Spirit flowing through us in the gifts of the Spirit, in the fruit of the Spirit? God wants wants to do a work in us. He wants to do a work in me. Old Testament, Elijah, he got in trouble. Why? Because he started listening to people. He started focusing on himself, and he started focusing on that old Jezebel, didn't he? We have to be careful that we don't focus on the spirits of our age, and it's a Jezebel spirit. And we got to stop believing that they're going to destroy us as a church. You hear what I'm saying? I'm speaking to you. Some of you that are involved in politics, be careful with that. I'm not saying you don't be aware of it, but remember not to focus on it. Remember that our focus is that we're part of the kingdom of God. And no matter what comes against us, even if we feel like we're alone in the desert and we're being fed by the crows, and we've got to maybe even eat crow, I don't know. I'm here to tell you, it's time for the church to realize he's not in the fire, he's not in the wind. He's in that still, small voice of the Holy Spirit. And he's going to provide... He's going to send a little widow woman who's only got a son and she's eating her last little bit. And he's going to send us to that one. And God will supply our needs according to his riches and glory. This is our God. And I'm here to tell you today that the Elijah of the Old Testament that went up in a whirlwind was standing with Jesus on Mount Transfiguration. He made it into the promised land. He was the one that is able to speak the word of God with fire and with power. God wants that same anointing on you in greater measure than it was ever on Elijah, so you can call down the fire of heaven. Anybody want to see the Holy Spirit fall on some people? Anybody want to see some people purified? Anybody want to see some lives change in the fear of God come back into our world? I'm here to tell you, God wants to give us that spirit of Elijah that we sang about today. God wants to give it to you. Anybody want it? Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? God wants to give to you power and authority like Elijah that you can bring down the fire of the Holy Spirit. Let's get into Christ and let's get out of the world. Mm. Choose, amen. Let's look at this, Romans chapter 6, verse 16, our text today. Do you not know that to whom you present yourself slaves to obey? Present yourself. In other words, it's an offering. You're choosing who you give yourself to. You are that one slave to whom you obey, whether of sin that leads to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. What will you surrender to? What we surrender to, we become the slave of. Someone or something is ruling your life. There's a Lord in your life. There's a master. Who's in charge? Have you identified what controls your time use, Kevin? What do you think, Laura? Have you identified where you're using your gifts and talents? Are they yours or do they belong to God? How about your treasure? Is there anything that's off limits, Joyce, to what God wants to do? Can he ask you to do anything you want? We need to be careful. Because whatever we give ourselves to, whatever is the pleasure of our life, is where our heart is. And where your heart is. Right? You've said it before many times. Right? Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So what we love, what we give ourselves to, what we give ourselves wholeheartedly to, what we give into, is what we'll give out. I put it on the sign. It says, garbage in, garbage spout. If you get too much junk into your mind, you'll start spouting it. You start listening to shows that have curse words, it won't be long before you're cursing, at least in your mind, if nothing else. It won't be long before, be careful what you gurgitate, because you'll regurgitate it. Sounds a little disgusting, doesn't it? When it comes to the world, it kind of is. What we get in, what we give, what we get into our hearts, what we give ourselves to is what comes out of our heart. It's very clear. We can choose death or righteousness. Isn't that interesting? It didn't say death or life. It said death or righteousness. 
The concept here is that you can live a life that's full of life, a full of rightness. In other words, it's bigger than just breathing. It's bigger than just existing. It's righteousness. It's a sense that things are right in my world, that I don't have to worry about that and this and that because I'm walking in the way that is right, the way that brings glory to God, the way that reflects His goodness and mercy. And as I was thinking about this, my mind goes back to Moses on the mountain. He goes up to receive the law, and he saw God's glory. And in fact, even after he had the law, he's on the mountain. He's like, God, show me your glory. One of the things that most impacted me as a young man was that phrase right there. It just got into my spirit. It still is. Show me your glory. Does anybody have that same heart after God? God, I want to see your glory. I want to see your greatness and your beauty. And your unsurpassed, uh, beyond imagination, uh, Lord, a revelation of you. I, I want to see. See, I don't even have words. I'm stumbling up here because I can't even uh, begin to con- con- conceive of his greatness. And, and he's, he covered him and he put him in a cliff in the rock. And I, I see that as us being in the side of Jesus, that cleft in the rock. Jesus, it, we, we get hidden in Jesus and, and we get covered over by the hand of God. He hides us there in Jesus so that we can see his glory as he passes by. I don't know about you. I want to see the glory of God. I want to see his greatness as I'm hiding where the blood and water flows. I'm here to tell you today, we can get into Jesus and we can give him our lives. We can give him our goodness. We can give him our blessings and let him transform them into something greater, into something more powerful. And as he was in God's presence, the Bible says because he was in the glory of God and he saw the glory of God, his face began to shine. Literally, literally. His face shone so much that he had to wear a veil because people couldn't kind of look at him. It was too bright. Isn't that amazing? And if that was Moses who was in God's presence, who was with God, imagine what can happen to you, Sarah. What can happen to you? What can happen to you if you're full of the Spirit of God? That's an amazing concept. There are some scientists that actually say that to some extent, and we can't see it, we actually produce light. That's a pretty amazing concept. You produce light, not enough for you to see as you walk by. But if you could see the infrared, you would realize you're producing a light source. You're producing an energy source that brings light into your world. Imagine what happens when you're full of the Holy Spirit. What happens in the spirit realm? No wonder we're armored by light. No wonder we have the power of God. When we give in to the Holy Spirit and we let the Spirit flow through us, then we end up getting into the promised land after being told we can't go into the promised land like Moses was. Moses made some mistakes. His physical body did not initially get to enter the promised land. But what happened? On Mount Transfiguration, because of Jesus, when Jesus arrived on the scene, guess what? Guess who we see on Mount Transfiguration? We see Elijah and we see Moses. Amen. We see Moses in the promised land. Why? Because Jesus has arrived. Does anybody know that when Jesus arrives, you can go to the mount where you can be transfigured, where you can be transformed by the Holy Spirit. You can be renewed. You can have a brand new way. You can go from giving in when you surrender the Holy Spirit and you submit yourself therefore unto God and resist the devil. It's not long before the glory and the power of God flow through you and you can give out the blessings of the Lord. You can give out the fruit of the Spirit. You can let the the power of God and the gifts of the Spirit flow through you to bring signs and wonders and miracles. This is God's desire for us today. So let's give in so we can give out what God gives us. Let's do this because if we will surrender to the Savior, then we can also know the power of what God wants to do. If we will surrender to Jesus, then we will no longer be slaves to sin. Amen. God wants to bless us. And thirdly, as I prepare to conclude momentarily, we need to go in so we can go out. Now, this is a nice one. This is the easy part of the message because this is where God is our shepherd and we are his sheep. John chapter 10, verse 9. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out. Say with me, in and out and find pasture. 
Does anybody need something for their soul? Does anybody need a blessing? Is anybody looking for help? Is anybody looking for strength? Is anybody looking for somebody to walk through with you through the valley of the shadow of death and not have to fear evil? Is anybody looking for a fresh green pasture? Is anybody looking for some still waters? Is anybody need their soul restored? Well, I'm here to tell you today that if you will do the first two, if you will get in and get out, if you will give in and give out, then God will get go into you and he will go out with you and you won't have to worry. He will go before you as you follow him. He will lead and guide you. He will be the Psalms 23 shepherd that we all desire. He will be like the God of David who raised him up in spite of his flaws, in spite of his weaknesses. God still said, he's a man after my own heart. Oh, I want to be a man after God's own heart. I want to be a woman after God's own heart. I want it to be said of me that I want to go in and out with Jesus, that God is in me and God goes out of me, flowing into my world. Hallelujah. 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 First Timothy chapter 4. As we bring application into this, First Timothy chapter 4, verse 15 and 16. Of course, this is Paul writing to his disciple, and we believe a discipleship here. We're to go to and make disciples. So 1 Timothy 4 15. Paul writes to Timothy, meditate on these things. One of the greatest fears I have as a pastor, and one of the reasons why I have slowed down. You know I have so many messages. I could preach, I could preach series. I, I have so much. But here's the reality. We have to be ready to receive it. And did you know dry ground does not absorb water as much as ground with grass in it? I just learned that this week. The reality is our province is a wilderness. You guys know that. I've shared that with you. The majority of churches in our district are not where we are. I wish they were. Some of them are farther ahead of us. Some of them are behind us. They're dry ground. They're wilderness. They're dry. They're so parched. The water just runs over the surface. It doesn't penetrate because the ground is not open. And I'm praying to God that God would help us to meditate on these things. One of the reasons why I slow down the ministry of the Word is so that we can absorb the nutrients and the water and the freshness of the Holy Spirit. And so it, we must take time. I'm, I'm going to ask you a very serious question. Do you meditate on what the Lord t- talks to us about? On Sundays, I know that we small do it in small group, but do you prepare for it? Do you think about it? Do you do you meditate on it? You got to meditate on the things of God. What are you thinking about? What you're going to do at work? What you're going to do with your family? What you can do with your friends? What do you meditate on? What what do you dwell on? Do you worry? Are you anxious, or are you meditating on the things of God? You are responsible for how you think. Proverbs 23, verse 7, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. If you're a glutton, you're going to be a glutton. If you're going to be, if you're going to be, uh, you act generous, but really in your heart, you're not. That's talking about that in Proverbs 23, verse 7. Really, what's really going on, a person really is what's in their heart. And so we need to meditate so we can absorb the things. We need to get it into our spirit. We need to get it in so that we can give it out. I'm here to tell you today, we need the Holy Spirit in our lives. We need this world desperately. Your family, your neighbors, your coworkers, your friends, everybody you know needs you to think on these things so that you have it in you to give. Okay, I'm going to be really straight with you. God is going to send us a revival. It's dependent on the number of people in this church that have enough to give. It's time to stop saying, I come to church to get enough for me and then have enough for the next two or three days. That's not how manna works, folks. It gets nasty and wormy after one day. If you want it fresh, you've got to get in the Word yourself. You've got to pray yourself until you have your own revelation, until you have your own demonstration, until you have your own insight, until God feeds you every day. You've got to meditate on these things. What I give you on Sunday is just marching orders for the week. It's the bigger picture. But in your daily life, God needs to speak into your life as you read the Word, as you pray, as you seek His face. You're going to find answers for your soul. Can I get an amen? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Hallelujah. Because what we meditate on is really who we are. What we're seeking for, what we're saving up for, that tells us who we really are. 
He goes on to say, give yourself entirely to them. Wow. Not only meditate on them, but give yourself to them. Does that sound like what we just preached? Give your, if you want to be a disciple, you don't only got to think on it and get it in your heart, but you, you got to give yourself to it. you got to submit to the word and say, God, change me, transform me. I want to be disciplined to the way and will of God. Can we just take a minute right now? I want you to do a transforming work in my life. I want to get on my own personal mount transfiguration. And I want you to transform by the renewing of my mind, Lord. I want you to do a work in me. Hallelujah. Come on, not half-hearted, not partial, but wholehearted. Hallelujah. I'm just going to say, I was going to share this earlier, but here's the thing. If you don't get in, if you're only halfway in, this car doesn't get to go anywhere. Anybody drive off with their spouse halfway in the car? I hope not. You know what came to my mind? And this, that was funny, but this is not funny. I know a man that died because his wife drove over him on purpose. She was out of her mind and she left. The kids were in his care because she was so messed up. And he was a good, godly man. Remember St. Louis? Beautiful man of God. Died protecting his kids. She ran over him and drug him. If we're not careful, we won't get in the car when we need to. Now, I know and that's, the analogy is not perfect here. But we need to be careful. When God calls us to get in, we need to get in. I'm just going to be honest with you. If you don't get in what God's doing, you're going to find yourself dragging. And it will damage you. Either get in or get out. Because there's coming a day, and you should have heard what's going on at the school this week. Oh, my goodness. I preached a message on the price of oil, and then the Lord came in and spoke through Brother Scott and said to the students, if you're not all the way in, don't come to school this semester. Leave. We will, we'll give you your money back, whatever. He said, I might even get fired over it. That's what's going on in our school this year. And he said, if you're not here Tuesday, no one will think bad of you. It's not a problem. And I'm seeing the same way. If you don't really want to go with us, I know I'm stepping out here. If you don't want to go with us as a church to revival in Fredericton and reaching the thousands of students and reaching the tens of thousands, the 10,000 backsliders and reaching all the people that don't know God, the 60,000 people, if you're not willing to go there and sacrifice for it, you might want to find another church. Because I am, I am done with playing games. Pastor's getting serious, in case you haven't noticed. And I've tried to be gentle about it. And I'm going to continue to try to be gentle about it. But I'm here to tell you, there's a fire in your pastor. And I'm going to feed it. And if you're with me, you're with me. And if you're against me, you're against me. Does that sound like Jesus? Either for us or against us. You can't be halfway. There is no lukewarm. We're either in or out. Get in or get out. Yeah. Give in or give out, as in fail. Or you can give out in the sense of getting in the flow. You either fail or you'll flow, depending on which one you submit to. You submit to yourself and continue to go the own way, you will fail. You will give out. And you will not have the strength in the end time. And when the Lord comes back, you won't have oil in your lamp. And I'm here to tell you right now, God is calling this church. He's calling me. He's calling you. I know because I'm feeling in my spirit. I'm trembling up here because I know exactly what I'm saying. And I know that if you don't listen and you don't get in, you're going to get run over. And you're going to get drugged. And not in a good way. I'm here to tell you, their progress will be evident to all, it says right here. Everybody will know. There's a clarifying coming. There's a clarifying. It's already upon us where you're either going to be, everybody's going to know whether you're in or you're out. I really believe that. Everybody's going to know. You're going to be an example of growth or you're going to be an example of something else. You're going to be an example of a, being a disciple or you're going to be the example of something else. All that matters is that you be like Jesus. And listen, it goes on to say, take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. You know, doctrine's not as popular as it used to be. We used to be a church where the teacher was the primary person that we listened to. When you went to camp meeting in the old days, it actually was the teacher that was the headline speaker. Oh, how we've changed in Pentecost. We're now it's the preacher that's the headline. It's the evangelist. And I have no problem with that. But let's be honest. 
The work of a teacher goes on a lot longer than the evangelist that brings them through the door. I love that we have doctors to give birth. But let me tell you, if that's all that happened, the doctor will be still taking care of some of you. Because you would go from being a little baby crying and they change your diaper. No, no, that goes to the parents. And the reality is the work of the church, the work of raising up people is in our hands. And we must, we must make sure that we're meditating, that we're giving ourselves to these things, that we're progressing and taking heed to ourselves, looking at ourselves, examining ourselves. It's so easy to look, point the finger at other people, but look at yourself, examine yourself. That's what prayer is for. That's what the word's for. Look to yourself first and examine yourself in light of doctrine. That's just simple biblical truths, core values. No and judge yourself by the truth. Know the truth and judge yourself by it. And then finally, verse the first fifth thing that you'll notice here that he said to Timothy is continue in them. In other words, be committed. Be consistent. Ongoing growth. God desires for us to grow in and grow up and out. That's God's desire. The reality is we have freely received this gospel. And we have free received this precious truth freely. Someone else paid for it with their prayers. Someone else preached the word that convicted you and turned you toward Christ. Someone else prayed you through to a place of repentance. Someone else baptized you. Someone else laid hands on you and created an environment environment for you to receive the Holy Spirit but now it's time church in motion for us to rise up and say I am blessed therefore I will be a blessing I have been given to so now it's time for me to give out it's been it's time for me to go into all the world and share this gospel with everybody that's hungry with every creature for every hungry heart for the bride of Christ to be purified and made holy in his eyes and in his pleasure would you give God some praise right now Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Would you stand together with me this morning? Acts chapter 6, verse 4. I'm bearing my heart to you today. I hope that you're careful with my heart. Because this is the heart of your pastor who also has the heart of God. Not perfectly, but trying to become perfect in his image. Acts chapter 6, verse 4. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and the ministry of the word. This year I challenged our board members to lead different aspects of the natural needs of this church. I did. I asked and thank you. You guys responded so beautifully and are still working so hard on all the projects around the church because that's the work of the Levites. And all of us are part of that priesthood. All of us are part of making sure from hosting to whatever you do, from Altina taking care of all the things she takes care of on the financial end and all the ways that we minister one to another with phone calls and small groups and hosting things and all the ways that we minister one to another. That's the work of the Levites. But the work of the priesthood, the higher calling, and I believe that's all of us to some extent, but specifically me, is to give myself to prayer in the ministry of the Word. And that means I am laying aside some things I hope you're not upset with me. That I want to go to another level so I can take you to a higher level with me. So I can reveal mysteries. I really do. I want to. Is it okay if I share my heart with you when I was a young man? I never dreamed of being a pastor. I didn't really want to be, to be honest. I saw the job, didn't like it. That's why I wanted to computer science and then tried to graphic design and then tried to work on being a psychologist. Anything <laughs> but being a minister in this day and age. What a mess. I hope you're praying for me. I need your prayers. I covet your prayers. I need wisdom I don't have. I need understanding I don't get, guys. I need you with me. And I'm here to tell you today, I want to give myself more and more prayer. You know what my dream was as a young man? God, make it so that I can spend three or four hours in prayer a day. You know, there's a very rarely a day goes by. Your pastor's not up by five at the latest six to pray for an hour, two, three, four hours sometimes. That's my call. And if you're retired, that's your call too. When you can't move like you used to, why not give yourself to prayer? Why not give yourself to intercession? 
You know what our world needs more than anything? Someone to get something from God and give it away. Get it in. Give it out. Receive from the Holy Spirit. And so God, I'm just telling you, God led me to one young man this week in the altar time that we were working at Northeast Christian College. I spoke the first, well, not, not the main event there, but the first chapel service. I had the privilege of speaking to the first chapel service and uh, the price of oil. And let me just tell you, I was praying for one young man. The Lord impressed upon me. He said, pray for them and tell them, you want to give him gifts. I want to lay hands on him. I want you to lay hands on him and give him the gifts that God has given to you. I know you might know this. I've shared this with you before, but there's a laying on of hands to give ministries and anointings. I haven't talked about it very much. There's a mantle on your, on your pastor. And I'm not worthy of it. Someday I'll preach about it. As I spoke to this young man, and the Lord directed me as he does often when I'm praying with people. God wanted to give him these gifts. But I, the Lord told me, you have to prepare for the gift. You have to purify yourself. Get yourself ready. And a few minutes later, that's when Brother Scott said, "If we're going to spend the next five days. You get to decide over the next five days whether you're in or out. But don't stay in if you're not all the way in. Isn't that mind-blowing? And the Lord this week is going to allow me to pray for at least this one young man, maybe others too, and transfer the gifts of C.M. Beckton, which is on my life, because he laid hands on me deliberately to give me those gifts. People like, I could list name after name that you would know, especially you elders. God has anointings in my life, and you know what? I felt prompted by the Holy Spirit. That's why I'm taking a little time here to tell you, if any of you want gifts from people like C.M. Beckton, from people like Brother Kilgore. Yes, he laid hands on me and gave me gifts that are from the Holy Spirit. If you have some of those openings in your life, God will give them to you. Because it's time to transfer some things to this church. Brother Kilgore, I'm, I, I can, I, I'm thinking of all these great men of God that have had them pray for me deliberately asking them to pray that God would gift me with their anointing. I'm hungry for more of God. I want to see souls saved. And I look at myself and say, it's not possible with this man. But like I heard Jesus, I hear as a disciple, I hear the Spirit say, with men it's impossible, but with God. You know what the other message was that I could have preached this morning? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And God is inviting you forward today if you want to receive a blessing from the Lord. He's saying if you want to get it, let's get in. Let's get in. Let's give in to Jesus. Let's go in to His presence to his holy place into the throne room of God. Come on, does anybody want to see a loved one saved? Has anyone got some family and friends that I hope to God they're not influencing you more than you're influencing them? The harvest is white. Is there anybody that will labor with me? At the beginning of the church year, this is it. This is the beginning of the church year. As far as I'm concerned, this is where we work for the next eight months. God is calling us. Would you turn your heart toward Him right now and just seek His face?
Come on, through Christ. Come on, through Christ. Come on, stop this. I told one young person this week, I said, you know what? You're, God is saying to you, you're too focused on your humility. <laughs> you're too focused on your humility. Your humility is getting in the way of true humility. Some of you are too humble <laughs> for your own good. Do you not realize that God has chosen you for this hour? Don't tell God like Moses did. I can't do it. My, I'm stumbling. I'm stammering. I, I don't know how to speak. I don't know, how to, I don't know what to do. And you stop saying that. God made you. And God has filled you with his presence. I can. I can. I can. Come on, say it in your own heart. I can, I can. do all things through I Christ. Can. Come Hallelujah. on. I, I can Amen. through Christ. Amen. Amen. I can through Christ. Through Hallelujah. Christ, through your anointing. God, I need more yes, of you, God. I'm just being humbled here today. So let's get more of Jesus. Would you get in? Would you get into more yes, of him? Yes. Would you give in to him? Hallelujah. Would you go into him? So that you can go, so you can give. So you can get him. Get Lord Jesus. Get out of you. Out of your belly will flow rivers to this world. Come on, let's cap in. Let's connect. Woo! There's an anointing here. That means God's doing a work in someone's life. I feel flow in the spirit. That means someone's connecting. Someone's allowing transformation to take place. Someone's seeing a brand new light and believing for the for maybe the first time that God can do it. Ah, God can do it in me. I may have to leave some things behind. I may have to leave some friendships behind. I may have to leave some thinking behind. But I'm going to get into you. I'm going to get your mind. I'm going to get your will. I'm going to get your will. I release you in Jesus' name. I bind every hindrance. I bind all pride. Anything of my heart, Lord, that's not right. You are loosed. You are loosed. You are loosed in Jesus' name. I will not be bound. I will not be bound. I will be a slave of righteousness, not of sin. I will serve you. I will serve you with my whole heart. Oh, would you let the glory in? Would you let grace in? If you can't receive glory, would you let grace in right now? Let so that I'm on that I'm on that. Lord, let the grace. I receive your mercy. I receive your grace. I receive your patience and your kindness. I receive you, Lord. I receive your love. I receive your joy. On, can you wait on the Lord? Would you meditate? Would you meditate? Would you wait until He renews you? Come on, we've lost our ability to, to wait in the altar. Amen. It's still, we still have a time. We still have time. And then I'm on that. Well, there's still time. Wait upon the Lord. Come on, God's been taking us to this place for, for several months now. Come on, it's coming to a, a crux point. Get in. Come on, get in. Don't get left behind. Come on, give in to the Holy Spirit. Give in to His will. Give in to His purpose. Go into Him. Go into the holy place. If, it's, if you're comfortable with this, don't hesitate to pray with someone. If you see someone that's in need or you want to bind together, and let's, let's pray with one another if, as you feel needed to. If you need to be alone, that's fine too. But let's just, let's just really seek after the Lord. Come into my heart. Come on, good shepherd. Come on. Into my Invite him in. Come on. It's your decision. Come we let so many other things into our heart. Oh. Lord Jesus. Let's let go of those things. Come, Come in. in. Come on. I loose you to use the gifts of the Come Spirit. I loose you to speak a word of faith, a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom. I loose you to let signs and wonders and miracles be loosed in this place today. Come on, if you have received freely from God, give out. Come on, give out. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Come into 
shadow you right now. Come on, know that he's leading you. Know that he's guiding you. Know that he is with you and in you. I do not go alone. Oh, there's a harvest field. But Lord, right now I need your strength. Yes, there's things that need to be done, but right now I just want to be with you. Come on, take some time just to be. Be with Jesus. You need to do this every day, not just today, but you need to do this every day. Get with Jesus until you've received power from on high. Until you can't help but go. Until you're so full it just flows out of you. Until you give out. I give in so I can give up. I submit, I surrender so that your spirit will flow. The world needs you. My family needs you. My friends need you. Lord, fill me. Fill me till I overflow. Fill me till I have to get up and go. Fill me till I can't stay still because I am so whole. I am so complete. Come on, God wants to make you whole right now. God wants to heal your heart and your mind. He is your answer, I promise you. I don't care what it is you're facing. I mean that with every bit of my heart. There's not a situation God is not greater than. God, I give myself to you. I give my life to you. I give my time, my talents, my treasure. I give my good, the bad, and the ugly. I give it all to you. Everything. Everything. I give you all. I give you all. Oh, come on, let's recommit. Let's rededicate. Oh, Soak in, come on, let it soak in. Let it soak, get a good soak. Any hardness, any scars will become softened. They can fade away. God apply some ointing, anointing oil to soften what's become hard. time breathe on me and this time maybe maybe just maybe <laughs> you'll let him fill you to the uttermost until joy flows out of your soul until there's a spring in your step and a sparkle in your eye because he has breathed on you the breath of life and you become a living soul all over again not just naturally but in the spirit alive We're going to dismiss with this today. And breathe on me, power of God, come in and change me.
let's get real. Let's get real with him. One last time, man. Come on, give me your everything and your all. Make it true. Change me. Change me. Renew me, Lord. Oh, you God. are all I need. I need. I put my faith in you and what you can do. Oh, Holy Spirit. Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you, you know the last word? Peace. peace. Amen. God Hallelujah. bless you. Shalom. Amen. Peace be with you, my brothers and sisters. Amen. Come back tonight for time of sharing and caring. Amen. Amen. Love you.